Hi, I'm Dan from 84 Property and we're going to try and do something a little bit different today where we're going to try and have a discussion about what we've experienced during uh, the COVID crisis from lockdown, um, letting the student houses during lockdown and what we've uh, had to go through um, to get to where we are now. And we're going to discuss this with Jamie who's the lettings manager and James who's the office manager. Um, and myself, Dan. So I, um, obviously, I, when COVID hit for us, uh, I don't know if you remember all that way back, and we've got a, quite a lot of um, Chinese students uh, at the time. So we would go in in the three beds where the Chinese students were, and they literally had signs on the walls yeah. saying COVID lives here, death and skulls. And literally, you couldn't get in to do a viewing. They were slamming doors in your face. You weren't allowed in without a mask, and we were like, fuck's sake. Before, it, before anything happened yeah. here. And like, we were like, oh, this is just nonsense, nonsense. And yeah, so, so that really, we, we were like, well, let's just try and let as much as we can and see what happens. But then um, as the pandemic progressed, we, 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 we had quite a lot of discussions in the office about um, what would happen if we did have a lockdown and, and, and how it would affect us. But I think... James had kind of been on the case a lot beforehand because he'd been pushing for us to be more automated and more online and looking at ways of improving the systems that we had anyway, which immediately lent to us to being a more uh, fluid company anyway. So I think that, that really played into our favour. So when we had to lock down, I'm not very technically proficient, so I literally had to hand over and say, how are we going to do this? Because I live in Seaford, which is 20 miles outside Brighton, so I had no real idea what was going to happen but James kind of took over and made sure that we, we functioned and worked together as a team. Yeah it was um, you know, as it's something that we've been working on for a while being able to work remotely if we need to, uh, being able to display as much of the information about the properties without being in them be that through you know our, our new photography, the floor plans, any 3D tours and things and just having that flexibility I think, as you said, with um, seeing some of the reactions from the, the Chinese nationals that were studying in Brighton, sort of, we, we saw it coming before it happened and perhaps thought they were blowing things out of proportion. But I think that gave us that, that little bit of warning where we could start to prepare things b before it even happened. Yeah, and, and things like, um, I mean, one of the things that I found really uh, important when, when we hit lockdown, which I think came really quickly. Um, so I think it was two or three weeks into the pandemic for us, and then we, we were locked out. Yeah, um, we made that decision early, didn't we? Yeah, when, a week when, early. When we saw things were, were progressing, we moved to be working remotely because we had things in place, and then lockdown happened after that, but we'd already made the transition and were prepared for it. Yeah, uh, things like, one of the things that I found really hard uh, was not being in the team. Um, mm. I found that seeing, I didn't realise how important that was to me when I was working, when I was sitting at home and looking at a screen and then having to phone everyone. It, it, it really didn't work for me. No, it, it did definitely slow things down. It does show you know, how much having that time in the office and, and being around people really affects sort of your, your work and, and your workload, but also just sort of your your day-to-day -day ability to, to progress through tasks. So I think that it, it, it kind of brought home how in lettings, especially when you're managing so many, and, and the student houses as well, how many things have to be bounced around the office. If an issue arises, it's like, oh, who's been dealing with this? How do we deal with this? Because there, there's an awful lot of um, opinions that have to go into resolving one issue. You know, if it's someone that hasn't paid their rent, it's, is there a historical reason for that? How's the house been behaving on the whole? How are they on the way in? Um, and and also, various people will know that. Yeah, and those, those records of who's spoken to who about what throughout the way, yeah. which is obviously something that we've had an eye on about possibly recording more data as we go. Yeah. But you don't realise that until you don't have that ability no. to, to discuss with stuff. Yeah. But it's yeah. a small team. And so when you have one person that does the accounts, one person that's like doing a let or whatever, it's like when, when you're in the office, someone picks up the phone and pops it on hold and then you can like bounce it around. But exactly. when you're at home... Especially where we've got the open plan office. So once we've got that up and running, 
and it, I thought it worked quite smoothly because James introduced us to working on teams and all where, so we had a meeting every morning at uh, 10 o'clock where we talked about all the stuff that we had to do and we really didn't know how this was going to pan out and I kind of had to place an awful lot of everything had to be with the team because like I say I wasn't even around so Jamie just sort of started I don't know, phoning up the students and saying, can you send us videos of your houses? Oh, well, lots of them I was just going around because lots of them were vacant. So right. I'd phone up and find out if they lived there. Okay. And I'd obviously go with you were going like, around yourself and filming them. Yeah, yeah. And then just filming them on my phone. And I'd send them to Izzy and Izzy would send them out. People would like take houses that way. It was yeah. weird. Like it was weird. And we actually let loads. Mm. I, I was I was shocked considering the unis hadn't said they were going to be open. Mm. Um, nobody knew where the crisis was going or what anybody was going to do, even how long we were going to have to stay at home. We were still letting houses for the coming academic year, which I found literally mind-blowing. How did yeah. you find the response from the videos? I know they, they weren't always the most professionally filmed videos we had, we've had being on phone cameras or even sometimes sent to us by tenants. I, I, were they received well? I think so. I think it shows that you can do it. And obviously now we do a much better standard with like the map ports, yeah. the virtual tours. Um, it, yeah, it shows how online you can be with it. But I also think that we kind of all, tenants included, basically worked with what we had to. Yeah. Like they wanted to take houses and we had, that was our only way of showing them. They were understanding that so, the quality video was all they were going to get. Yeah, basically. <coughs> so what, one of the things that uh, I, I noticed quite quickly was um well i mean as as eightfold probably with our uh, lettings portfolio we are pretty much weighted in favor of the students we've got like an 80 percent um roughly an 80 percent weighted portfolio in, in favor of the students so um what i found was quite quickly when the students left their student houses and went home um that everyone was looking at the government announcements so they were saying all landlords were going to be given a three-month buy-to-let mortgage holiday. Um, everybody should go home. And, and the advice that they were getting from the student union in particular was wrong on quite a few levels. For instance, I found that um, when they were talking about um, uh, an, uh, an across-the-board mortgage holiday for all buy-to-let landlords, it doesn't include HMO landlords, and most student houses are HMOs. So they're, they're effectively commercial lending, then they're not buy-to-let mortgages. So when we were getting the calls and the students were saying, well, we're going home, you should be giving us three months free rent, it didn't work because the landlords were then phoning their mortgage companies. And, and, and mortgage lending for a HMO, it's a much smaller pool than it is for your standard buy-to-let mortgages. Mm. So, and, and across the board, I can't think of one HMO landlord who applied and got any sort of relief from their lender. No, they didn't. No. And, and the students weren't understanding this because the university were literally just saying, well, it wasn't even the university, to be fair, it was the students' union. Yeah. Um, verbatim, we were getting all the emails from the students going, it's terrible the, what's going on in the world, but, you know, you, we've been told this, and so therefore you should be giving us free rent. I thought what was interesting that was coupled with that as well was the, the lack of understanding of, you know, the particularly if you look at our pool of landlords, that you've got a range from people with large portfolios with, with a lot of income down to, to people that have cashed in their pensions to, to offset and, and sort of bring in a bit more income. So it, the, coupled with the fact that they were anticipating that landlords didn't have any expenses, they were also not appreciating that some landlords were relying on this money to actually be able to feed their families You mean their families everyone's at the assuming time. that all the landlords were billionaires yes uh, massive, massive companies all the private built purpose built uh, student accommodation yeah exactly yeah because i mean uh, as we all know like when you're talking about um certain landlords they've got like two or three properties and they're, they're fairly old they've all chipped in their pensions and they own two or three student houses yeah. which you know once you pay in your the mortgages that you have on there they're not earning millions and millions out of it by any chance you know and, and once you're taking our fees off any mortgages any tax all the certificates um, all the insurances they have to have there's not a huge pool um, so taking away that income especially when that is instead of their pension it was asking a lot and i don't think a lot of the students understood that at the outset yeah that, that's exactly the point is that perhaps you know between the headlines there was so much of the the actual information about 
how it worked in the real world going yeah. through to, to a lot of tenants be, be that the students because it was pushed more by the student union but also a, a lot of the other tenants as well yeah yeah I, I think one of the problems was that as, as with most things with the student union it, it's it's say first and, and get your facts in line later yeah. um, and I think pretty much when we approached the student union and said all of these facts are completely wrong please talk to us and we can point you in the right direction and explain exactly how this is going to work and we've got no replies. No. I think that um, that initial uh, onslaught from the students died quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, and then it was a matter of kind of mopping it up and speaking to everyone individually. Because I personally found that um, there were some people who did need help. Um, some parents uh, had been um, not just furloughed, but they had lost their jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and these students weren't in um, uh, employed. Uh, all, all the service industry was gone. Um, so we had to look at everything on an individual basis and there were cases where the landlords were uh, less encumbered than others and the students were more in need than others and those people were allowed to be helped. Yeah. But it was, it was trying to get across that it wasn't a clean sweep that someone could just come and say, I am a student, I've gone home, therefore this is the answer. Yeah, it's, it's you know, picking the, the facts and, and the case and considering everything. Yeah. individually rather than it being a, a blanket sweep which I think is what a lot of people were expecting from, from yeah. the beginning so I think there, there were really there, there really were a lot of worried landlords there yeah. and then you had um, uh, movements like um, not so much shelter the more local one Acorn they were saying that nobody should be able to pay any rent during this period which was quite ridiculous really especially if you've got um, uh, tenants who've been furloughed they're on 80% they're taking the landlords taking a small hit, so that the whole industry is actually still working. Yeah, um, it's almost it's just a case of then moving the problem. It's yeah. not necessarily the tenant that's being hit, but then the landlord would have zero income. So you're you're taking the problem and just moving it further along the yeah. chain yeah. rather than solving it without resolving it at all. Yeah. So once we got to the to, to the end of that problem, which is still ongoing with some people, <laughs> it became a matter of uh, so, so we came out of lockdown. Or, or the tighter lockdown, and we, we tried to reintegrate how the office worked. Uh, the universities turned around and said that they were going to be open, at least in a sort of blended approach for the first couple of months or first couple of semesters. Um, what were the problems that you saw as far as everyone moving in that, that we had? Because you, you were pretty much on the ground. I mean, I, I didn't do any of the letting, you were doing all the letting. Mm. you were seeing the people in uh, what were the sort of what well, our actual worries? summer moving in well the, the, the worries that people had as you're showing them around as you're showing them the videos all the questions that they really had so obviously like cleaning is sort of like a massive one because right. everyone was wanting to know that you know we'd take extra measures to to provide you know yeah. somewhere really clean which obviously we did yeah um, and I think the other one is just the, the thought of it happening again like people are really clean, keen to get break clauses in, yeah. um, which is pretty much impossible for us to offer because no yeah. landlords are going to agree to someone signing a tenancy that yeah. can be broken. Um, yeah, no, from sitting at the back, that was what I was hearing more. was like, hey, can we have another break clause? What if we have a second wave? Yeah. And I, I know I, for one, I always look at things very positively. We like, we're definitely not going to have another second wave. Right? It's definitely, it can't happen at all. And, and now... We Who are knows, about yeah. to have another second wave, yeah. But I, I, I'm not hearing the same anger from the students. I'm not hearing the same panic. No. I haven't had, I think I've had one student uh, who's actually a foreign student who's not been able to come over because, because of quarantine. He's saying that he wants to be released from his tenancy. But apart from that, I haven't had anybody say, okay, what's going to happen about this? I mean, from what, um, like uh, Olivia who works for us, she's a student. And from the idea that she's telling us is that they're all quite happy to stay in quarantine in their student houses if it mm. happens again. I think it's a, a different, uh, uh, initially I think what we saw from a lot of people across the board and not just necessarily our, our tenants is, is that panic, it's, it's the unknown, whereas now we've been mm. living with this problem for, for six months now and people are looking at it going, well if it happens again, it's already happened once, so it's not a new thing, it's something that we've adapted to yeah. and I think a lot of people are now looking at it going, well, that is the world that we live in. So if we have another lockdown, then we're going to be able to be coming back. And 
you know, I know from, from my time at university that I don't think I'd want two consecutive lockdowns shut at home with my parents. So it may well be, no. So it may well be that a lot of them have looked at it thinking, well, I'd have enjoyed lockdown more shut away with my friends than I, I did the first time round. So why not you know, live in my university town, carry on with my studies and hang out with my friends rather than looking at it the other way? Um, and that's that's sort of opening up and making people relax a little bit more. I think yeah. it's probably going to become more normalised. That's why, like when it first happened, everyone was like, "Yeah, what the?" Got to go home. Fred, got to, got to sit at home. But yeah. Yeah, and it seemed like apocalyptic. Mm. And then if it's going to become more normal, people will probably be like, "Well, I'm not going to go home this time." Yeah, and especially since I think that if if we do have a second lockdown, which we are, um, maybe it's, it's not going to be the same as before. It's no. not going to be everyone stuck at home because they're still going to try and keep the economy going. So in, in certain ways, it's going to be, like you say, working within a new normal. Yes, because if you look at the, this latest you know, sort of semi-lockdown, they've not gone straight in as it was before and said, you, know, you shouldn't be doing anything. They said anyone, still panic buying toilet rolls, though. To, yes, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's it, more this time around, they're saying anyone who can work from home should stay at home and anyone who can't doesn't need to. And it, it's to try and... And reduce the risk as much as possible while keeping the country running. And I think yeah. we're going to see a lot more of that over the coming months. Yeah, with local lockdowns being a uh, more of a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think um, one of the things that you may see as a trend as we're moving forward, especially in the students, and you were reading an article in the co living sector. Yeah, is is how um, you know loneliness being. I, just, I know. Um, you know, I've got one daughter and, and she's at home and she didn't see any of her friends. She's 15, she didn't see them for like four or five months during lockdown. We were quite strict about it. Um, and, and I can imagine a lot of the students were the same. So now if they, if they choose a good group and they have a good house with a nice bit of outdoor space, a decent living area, rather than the old style student houses where everything was crammed in, you had a live work area or, or a kitchen diner sort of thing. And so it's the only living area. You have a nice lounge and, and everything's catered for you can actually hang out, yeah, yeah rather yeah. than It'll get be a, stuck with your parents. Yeah, much more, nicer place to yeah, be. Yeah, much more pleasant scenario. I think people would be happily working within that, uh, in the knowledge that's the only way they're going to get this university education now. Yeah. And I think you'll find that the landlords who are focusing on that as, as a project when they're building their, their student houses for the next three to five years, if they're focusing on those sort of um, well-being and mental health issues, they're the ones that are going to have the student houses that are going to let first and foremost. Yeah, I do think this is going to be one of those things that's really changing the face of, of shared housing in the country. Yeah. And I'm sure it's probably those sorts of houses that you see going first anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's changed, like, massively anyway. Now, now we're seeing it's like you need top, top student housing. Yeah, to, to well, I, th I think it. I've also noticed when, even when we've been doing viewings recently, because I see the inquiries come in, not that I deal with them, but I see them come in, and people are already saying, have you got a video viewing of this? Mm. And you, get, you get people who are quite happy that, that the, uh, the flat on the seafront that we did, you know, that was let on a first viewing off a video mm. without even going down there. So yeah. it's like people are sort of quite happy now to look at, a, to yeah, looking at quite a decent quality video rather than having to come down, and especially with the students who are coming from, you know, up north, Leeds, Middlesbrough, Scotland, Newcastle, wherever they're coming down, they don't need to come down. Yeah. As were before, they would have to come down, view six or seven different houses. It was really labour intensive. You may even find that this becomes uh, a better a better model. The problem with it, though, as we know, is that you do you do everything. They take it off a of video, do all the contracts, and they move in. And they're like, this house is crap. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, well. <laughs> but we took it off video and you're like, yeah, I know. Yeah. There's, like, there's not a lot you can do about that. We know that, but... Yeah. I'm not convinced it will ever fully replace the physical viewing, but it may well, as we've seen with a lot of the other things where we've included more and more information, it may well filter out more of the people that maybe aren't right, it's not the right property for yeah, them. So sorry. rather than doing 40 viewings for a property, you might be down to four because the others have seen the 3D tour, seen the pictures, the floor plan, the, the walkthrough video. Yeah, they don't like it. Exactly, yeah. and said, you know what, I thought this was for me when I saw it, but now I've seen that. It's not, and, and that's really going to make things a lot safer for everyone as well. Got kind of way of ruling stuff out. Yeah, rather than... Yeah, narrowing the pool of what you're going to look for. Yeah. What did you think 
was a positive that we can take from um, a corona situation, if there is one, uh, for the industry and move it forwards? Uh, I guess just, I mean, I even, I'm sure we all saw it, not just for the industry working or even like work, but I'm sure we all saw it with families and friends as well, is that everyone can adapt. And I think mm. it was all, it was difficult for us, like you say, we faced challenges outside of the office and that was hard, but we, we carried on, we did all right. You know, yeah. we carried on supporting each other and being able to talk to each other about each other's issues and yeah. still managed to support tenants, hopefully. Yeah, so well, it's like I think I actually got a lot more face time with the students, with the tenants. Mm. You know, there was actually quite a few uh, tenants that I actually have a relationship with now because they would come to me and explain what their situation was, and between negotiating with them and the landlord, I actually built up a relationship with them. Yeah, um, yeah. and that, that was quite nice to see because I would never have had that uh, the reason to do that before. Yeah, I think I think I agree with both of you there. It's more as we've seen a lot of the time in the past tenants having issues would have buried their head in the sand and we'd only be dealing with it at, at the 11th hour when it's already a problem. Whereas I think being forced into a position to have to keep those communication lines open definitely means that we're communicating a lot better and a lot more often with the tenants. Yeah. No, I, mean, I, I think the positive that I took from it was it was um, everything that we've been doing in the background is actually being validated um, and will become the norm. But like, we were we already had the Matterport camera. Yes. Um, we already had you know we, we're already doing our social media. We're already doing um, the things which other agents now I've seen are trying to catch up with. Yeah, which has been it's really nice to see that validated because it was costing a lot of money, and you know I'm sure there are agents looking at us going why are you bothering doing all that? You don't need to. Um, but it, it's now going to become the norm, and I think that's now going to hopefully at least in the short term separate us so we can think of other new and interesting ways of pushing forward. Yeah, it's definitely showing that what we were doing was definitely the right thing. We were ahead rather than doing things that were unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that I, I think we've changed that, that's gone really well is the, the fact that this has meant that we don't have people turning up to our office. Not that we don't want to see people, but it means that we're making sure that people are booking in an appointment to collect their keys or an appointment to come in and see us. And we're not being surprised by people turning up that we weren't expecting. It means everything is prepared and ready to go because we knew they were coming in that 15 minute slot. And I think that's definitely something that uh, we'll, we'll be pushing to keep going forward. Yeah, so I mean, we, we've been discussing, well, we, we've made the conscious decision probably two years ago to leave the high street because we, we found that the, the walk-in uh, business we were getting was pretty much non-existent. And when it did come in, it was so, um, it was so flippant, it didn't it even turn into any viewings. Yeah, because we, we'd sort of, made that decision and pushed because we, as we've been saying through this, is, is growing and growing that digital presence. We don't need that physical high street presence because everything is is being seen digitally, yeah. but at least we could keep that, that space for people to come okay. and visit us. All the traditional things that we people used to visit uh, an estate agency for, like signing your paperwork, uh, it just, it's not it's not a thing anymore. Yeah. So that was completely pushed to the side. It, we didn't feel the need for a high street office, so we'd already bought this new office and we're moving there at the beginning of lockdown, which kind of worked out well for us with getting a refurb it whilst we're not doing anything else. Yeah, I think it very much validates that decision that we made all that time ago that, that it was, again, the, the right move and we've been putting things in place that now means that we can grow and, and move forward and sort of make the most of it. Yeah, super. Yeah, so this was uh, a conversation um, that we're going to draw to a close now and it, these are the sort of things that we discuss in the office day in, day out, whether it be over um, Skype or, or FaceTime or on the phone or in person now, we're back in the office. So if there's any uh, any issues or, or conversations you'd like to hear that you think can discuss a subject that you think is to do with letting or property management or commercial property, um, put in the comments below and we'll see if we can help you out.